Hi, today we're in conversation with one of the most influential and dynamic leaders. She is the mayor for the city of Surrey, Diane Watts. Hi, Diane. Hi. Welcome. It's an honor to talk to you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Well, thank you so much, first of all, for taking our time to talk to Durban Magazine. Um, and like I was saying, uh, you've considered as one of the most influential and transformative leaders um, in the history of the region. When you look back over the years, uh, what has been one of your most uh, biggest accomplishments for you? Well, first of all, thank you for those kind words. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, uh, as I always say, it takes a great team to uh, really do what we've been able to accomplish here uh, in the city of Surrey and as well affecting the region. And I have to say that's probably one of the uh, things I'm most proud of is how we've been able to come together mm -hmm. uh, as a, a level of government, uh, working together, working with other different orders of government, but also too as a community and as a, as a region to really move initiatives forward and really look at issues head on and, and ensure that we are um, you know, on the edge of uh, innovation or really dealing with whatever issues that might come up with a growing region in the city. Absolutely. Now, talking about your accomplishments, um, you've led one of the biggest cities in the province and one of the biggest cities in Canada, uh, Surrey being such a big city and with a huge population and demographic. Were there any obstacles or challenges that you had to overcome during your term? Well, you know, it, absolutely. There's uh, when you have a city that grows as quickly as we have. So, in in the time that I've been mayor, we've added about 130,000 people. So that's the size of another small city, and we have a very it's a very young city, very young population, and so with that are many opportunities. But there's also many challenges because we're dealing with the fluidity of a population. We're dealing with a very diverse population. You know, 95 uh, languages are spoken in the city yes. and uh, and the most kids per capita than anywhere in the region so with all of those pieces uh, in play we've really got to be paying attention to infrastructure uh, making sure that we're lobbying the provincial and federal governments to ensure that we have the the infrastructure that we need because of course it's under their jurisdiction, whether it's health, whether it's schools, whether it's uh, transportation. So that I think has been a challenge because as much as we want to move forward and have all of these things in place, again it's dealing with other orders of government um, that we have to pull along. Mm -hmm. So that, that has been a challenge. Absolutely. Now during your term you made some significant changes, whether it's the public policy initiatives or the work or education. Um, was there anything that you feel was not quite finished or not quite completed or you feel could have been done differently or you set as a goal but was not quite there? Well, I think one of the things that we've been able to do with our uh, transportation rapid, uh, rapid transit is really get it encompassed into the plan moving forward. So there's a commitment on behalf of the region that yes, Surrey and south of the Fraser is next in line for that expansion. I would have liked to have seen it uh, under construction right now, yeah. but you know, again, that's one of the challenges was actually shifting the mindset of the region to say, oh, yes, there's almost a million people south of the Fraser, over 500,000 in Surrey, because a lot of people don't really understand uh, how much we've grown and uh, where we need to be. So that was a significant push to really get them to understand where we were. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about the achievements and significant changes that you've made, there have been some astounding changes, but one of the key issues or the concerns that has been with the city of Surrey is crime control. Now, during your term, there has been a significant decrease in property crime, but uh, what do you think is required to sort of deal with the situation overall in terms of crime control? Well, I think first of all, we have to really look at what is the truth. 
You know, we've had a couple of profile, uh, high profile incidences uh, last year with, um, with Julie Pascal and just recently with uh, uh, young Serena. So, you know, and that was last year and then, like I say, that was this year. So we need to put things into perspective and I know right now there's a, a, an election underway so, yeah. I, you know, to ramp things up is part of the part of you know their platform but I think that it doesn't serve the residents or the city well mm -hmm. I think what we have to do is really look at what is actually going on mm -hmm. what, what is the the basis in truth and begin to deal with those issues so the basis in truth is that we do have a population that have mental health issues mm -hmm. we do have a population that have addiction issues uh, both of those pieces um, are you know dovetail into into crime so in order to affect change we really have to have those issues dealt with and so and again it's under the provincial government but for us you know, we've, we have our mental health and, and addictions precinct around the hospital, so we've been able to leverage treatment facilities, detox facilities, um, and um, housing. And so, and then there's the element where there are people being placed into our community uh, from other areas in the region. So it's, it's the coordination of all of that. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would say this, is that adding 130,000 people, uh, and again, a very young population and a very uh, fast-growing population, with all of that in place, and we're still seeing a decrease in crime, that's where you have to look and there you know and it's a multifaceted perspective and one one thing doesn't fix everything and it's it's all of our responsibility as a community i raise my children here i teach my children what's right and what's wrong mm -hmm. and you know i'm responsible for them and they have to be responsible for their own behavior. And so I think the community has a huge role to play because, you know, if there's breaking and enterings or if there's uh, some property crime, usually that's somebody in the community. It's somebody's son or daughter, or, you know. Exactly. So I think that there, people need to understand that they need to bear responsibility. And it's all three levels of government because different jurisdictions are in different, different pieces. You know, so what we can do, and we've done a lot of work in terms of um, really working with our young people and really trying to change that mindset that, you know, quick money, fast cars is not the way to go. And, you know, it, it's, it's a glorified lifestyle of, um, you know, of either getting into a gang or getting into a lifestyle that's going to cause problems, you know, drug fueled or whatever that might be. And it's really getting to that piece and saying, this is not the way to live. You're either going to end up in jail or you're going to end up dead. Yeah. So, and having the most kids per capita than anywhere in the province, that's really been a significant piece for us. Does it have instant results? Um, you know, we've seen a bit of a decrease. However, the, these are long-term pieces. Long-term changes. And, uh, and we all have to participate. Exactly. Because, you know, us as government, you know, I can't tell your kids what to do or how you should parent, but we can work at it together. And, you know, also the other piece, and we've seen, you know, with this, with this last um, uh, high-profile incident where a young girl lost her life. Well, you know, that was a high-risk sex offender that was was on parole that should not have been in the community and so again that goes to the parole board that goes to probation and all of which are outside of our our realm of jurisdiction yeah. but and that's why it's so important to have those partnerships and to make sure that we are communicating and and dealing with that so you know and we'll do our part you know absolutely but everybody else needs to do, do their bits as well. As well. Yes, yes, sure. Absolutely. absolutely. Now you announced that you will not be seeking re-election as a mayor, but moving to federal politics yes. and be doing running the nomination for the Conservative Party of Canada. Now, how did you come up with that decision? Well, you know, again, it it really speaks to the advocacy of where we need to take our voice. I believe that we need a very strong voice in the city of Surrey and, uh, you know, as well combining with the voices in the region. And there's issues that we need to take forward. And, 
for me, there's a number of things on several fronts that I think that we need to really make sure that the federal government is, is hearing involved. what we're saying. And they're involved because, again, you know, whether it's infrastructure, transportation, justice issues, Everybody has a role to play. You can't just say, well, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not good enough. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, you have left a great legacy under your leadership for the city. Now, for the future mayor who's going to be coming in the post, do you have a message or advice for the future leader of the city? Well, I think as, you know, I, I don't think it's a secret that I am <laughs> supporting uh, Councillor Linda Hepner for mayor. And, and I'll talk about the reason why. I think that it is really important, especially dealing with all of the issues that, that you know, we deal with in terms of growing so quickly. You need experience, you need stability, you need to make sure that the interests of the city are first and foremost. Yeah. It has nothing to do with your own personal aspirations, your own personal agenda. What's in the best interests of the city? And, and I believe that those elements are absolutely within uh, within the personality of, of Councillor Hepner, um, and it's and like I said, it's it's making sure that as well the environment for investment. I mean, we all, all want our kids to work and have jobs and be close to home and all of those things. Well, if you're not fostering the environment for investment to come here, then um, we've got a problem. So all of those elements, uh, whether education, investment, um, infrastructure, all of those have to be, uh, there has to be a steady hand at the helm and experience. Absolutely. Now finally, now that you're moving to federal politics, is there a set of expectations or goals or vision that you have for yourself in your political career? Um, you know, I don't, I don't actually sit down and, and lay things out like that. Um, I do, if, if it's something that I'm being pushed to do, and when I say into, I'm pushing myself to do and change, then I will. I look at every opportunity that comes forward to me, and I do the analysis around: Does that fit in my life? Is that something I want to do? Is that somewhere I want to be? And so I go through that analysis, and and you know the the issue around the federal federal pol politics uh, came into play, and I, I did. I, I spent a good amount of time looking at that and doing some analysis around that and that fit for me. So who knows what's around the corner and you know I'll just continue to be open to all of the opportunities out there. Well yeah for sure. Well on behalf of Durban Magazine we wish you best of luck and thank good you. wishes for all your future endeavors and your political career. Yeah. Once again thank you so much for talking to Durban Magazine. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you Diane. Thanks.